Hello everyone, this is Mackenzie Massey at Zygo. Uh, we will be getting uh, started shortly. We're just gonna wait for some more people to join in and trickle in as um, we get started here. Hello everyone, uh, we are going to get started. Uh, so uh, first I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. I'm sure like everyone else, uh, I am also working from home right now. So uh, hopefully everyone is doing well and staying safe in these uh, challenging times that we are in right now. Uh, so first out, I'd like to start out with some introductions. So my name is Mackenzie Massey. I'm an applications engineer at Zygo. I'm based out of our Santa Clara, California office. And also uh, helping out with the webinar, we have Steve Munzee, who is another application engineer, and he is based out of our headquarters in Connecticut. Uh, he'll be monitoring any uh, questions and comments that come in through the chat throughout the webinar. And we'll pause every so often for uh, some Q&A during the, during the presentation. So to start out, uh, let's do a little bit of housekeeping first. So just to give you an idea as to how uh, GoToWebinar is laid out, so it's generally split between two screens. So you should see a, uh, the presentation and then a webcam view as well. So if you want to adjust the relative size between those, you can use the little um, grab bar in between. You can also disable the webcam if you really only want to see the presentation. Uh, there's also a control panel, which uh, if it's hidden, you'll see there's a orange box with a white arrow in it where you can open and close the window. Uh, you can also toggle between full screen and um, out of full screen. And finally, uh, there's an area that you can submit questions. So as we go through the presentation, if there's questions that you have about any of the features that we're going through, feel free to submit them real time. Steve will be monitoring your questions as they come in. And if it's something quick and easy, he'll probably respond uh, immediately back to you. If it's something he thinks is probably gonna be interesting to a wider audience, then he'll save those for some of the breaks where we do a Q and A. Um, I am expecting this presentation to go for roughly about 30 minutes or so, uh, just to give you an idea. So what are we gonna talk about today? So first off, we're gonna start with Part Finder and Smart Setup. Part Finder is a 
a feature that we can use to automatically find focus for us. And then Smart Setup is going to take Part Finder and make it go a step for a few steps further, uh, where it's going to automatically set some measurement controls for us, like scan length, light level, and then automatically take a measurement for us. Next, we're going to get into the Level Step tool, which is a investigative kind of interactive tool that allows you to uh, level your data relative to certain areas. And it's interactive in the sense that it uh, directly lays right on a plot and you can uh, interact with it real time. Uh, and then it can also be used to measure the uh, height or depth of a feature. Next, we're going to get into custom workspace. And this is where you can create a very customized UI, whether it be a very simplified interface for a production environment where you want operators to only see a very minimal amount of information or access to a minimal amount of controls. Or maybe you're doing some very in in-depth investigative analysis and you really want to have all your plots and controls kind of in one dashboard, uh, you can create a, a very comprehensive interface in that case where you have all the tools right at your fingertips. So to start out, uh, what are we going to use to do this? So right now I've got a Z-Gage optical profiler set up on a rolling cart in my basement and we have a few different surfaces set up on the stage, uh, including a printed circuit board, a metal surface, which is just a piece, a cylindrical surface, a polished plano optic, a sticky note, uh, as well as a rock that I pulled out of my backyard. So powering the ZGH is our MX software. So at the heart of it is our more data signal processing alg algorithms that allow you to extract even an angstrom and a half or a vertical resolution on this ZGH as it sits in my basement. Um, and it's also designed in a very workflow-based UI. So it's broken into a few main tabs, depending on what you're trying to do. And then within each of those tabs, you have the controls that are kind of specific to that job that you're trying to do. So for instance, in the measure tab, you've got a nice big live display. You've got your measurement controls on the left-hand side, and then some previews of your data uh, as well. So let's start out with Part Finder. So the way that we use Part Finder is we go down below Focus and we hit the Find Part button on the toolbar or the F5 keyboard shortcut. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna scan up at about a millimeter per second to find focus for you. And it works great on just about any type of surface, whether it be something smooth and flat or rough and textured or cylindrical, it doesn't make much of a difference. So here we can see it already found focus for us and we can barely even see the fringes uh, such that to make sure uh, that we did find focus, we can confirm it by taking a measurement. So even on a surface like this where you have a piece of paper where it's a really diffuse surface and not much to really see, it easily measured the surface and now we have a height plot of our data, which is what the texture of a sticky note looks like. So Part Finder is a great tool to quickly and easily find focus on just about any surface. And it takes a lot of the guesswork out of getting uh, your initial setup done. The next thing that we have though is Smart Setup, which is gonna take it a step further and optimize some of our measurement controls and then take a measurement for us. And Smart Setup includes Part Finder. So all we need to do, so I'm gonna say switch over to this five and a half X objective. And for instance, let's use the uh, polished glass optic. We start down below focus and click Smart Setup on the toolbar. So now as it goes up, it's gonna find focus for us automatically. And then it's gonna go through a couple other iterations of scans to then automatically find focus, adjust light level, set your scan length for you, and then take a measurement. So within typically 30 seconds to 45 seconds, you can end up with data on your surface where, or on the uh, plot without pretty much any interaction from the user. So now we can see this is what the surface of a polished glass optic looks like and no problem finding focus, setting your measurement controls and light level uh, to get pretty good data for a launching point. So obviously something like Smart Setup is gonna work great on a pretty well-behaved surface like a Plano Optic, but now we can really uh, kick it up a notch 
and let's go over to the rock that I pulled out of my backyard. So similarly, start down below focus and smart setup. And now as it's going through this, it's really going to uh, show the power of this tool because in this case, we're gonna need a probably two to 300 micron scan length because it's so rough and so textured. And even at low magnification, it's not gonna have any trouble finding focus and then adjusting those measurement controls for you. So it just makes life easy to really get a good launching point for getting data uh, for an investigation. So as you're starting out and just trying to figure things out, it's a really great tool for that. So now we can see in just a few short seconds, we've ended up with a, a height plot of what the surface of this rock looks like. We can see that it has a peaked valley of a couple hundred microns and it easily calculated a scan length that was long enough to measure that. And it did that all in less than a minute with pretty much no user interaction. So Part Finder and Smart Setup are great tools for people just starting out uh, using an optical profiler, or even the, those of us that have decades of experience using an interferometer. And getting focus and finding your surface and dialing in your measurement controls, uh, it just makes it a breeze to do that. So even for us Zygo applications engineer, when it's a Monday morning and we haven't quite had our coffee yet, uh, Smart Setup makes our lives easier as well. Uh, so now uh, let's pause for a break and get into any questions that we might have, particularly about Part Finder and Smart Setup. Uh, so now I'd like to ask Steve to read out any of the questions that may have been submitted already. Thanks, Mackenzie. We have a few questions here. Okay. Do you have to manually pitch roll or is there an automated version? So on the Z gauge, it's a manual tip tilt. Um, if you had a new view or a next view, you do have uh, an option for a motorized tip tilt stage. And then after you do part finder or smart setup to find focus, you can then use the auto tilt button to then automatically level the surface as well. Thanks, Mackenzie. I'm, I'm just, we're getting a lot of questions in here and I'm trying to funnel through them as quickly as possible. Okay. So... Our next question. Um, I was asking about what scan length was set on the rock measurement. I think you oh. use smart setup for this, but just as yes. Said. So for smart setup, uh, the scan length that it determined that was necessary was 241 microns. So you can see that over here in the bottom left. We can see that it had a peaked value of 237 microns. So it really dials in that scan length to be just as long as it needs to be without being any longer. And I didn't need to set up any kind of search range ahead of time. It's automatically gonna search over hundreds of microns or millimeters to easily find focus and then go through the iteration to figure out what that scan length is, even if it is hundreds of microns. Thanks. Thanks, Mackenzie. It looks like for now, those are the only relevant questions we have for this section. Anyone that I didn't get to in this section, I will try to answer you privately. So I'm going to hand the questions, uh, the presentation back to you, Mackenzie. Sounds good. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so next up, we have the level step tool. And this is what we're going to use to automatically level our data relative to a certain area, as well as being able to measure the height or depth of a feature within that surface. So for this example, I'm going to switch over to the printed circuit board. And this is going to have a few features that we can uh, automatically level and measure uh, the height of. And to make our lives easier, we'll use smart setup. Uh, so you can see that even on a surface that has kind of more geometric shape to it with features and kind of varying reflectivities, it'll still work well on that uh, and adjust uh, the measurement parameters such as scan length and light level. Uh, as it needs for those two.
So now that we have the uh, measurement of the printed circuit board, I'm going to switch over to the Analyze tab. So when we're in the Analyze tab, above the main surface plot, you'll see an Investigation Tools drop-down menu. When I click on that, and then you'll see an option for the Level Step tool, we can click on Show Tool, and that's going to bring up the control window, uh, particularly for the Level Step tool. So for instance, maybe we want to level relative to this big area in the top right and then measure the depth of one of these pockets. So I can choose the option for one reference and one test. And when I do that, it brings up these two boxes onto the plot. So the blue one is our reference area and the red one is the test area uh, that once we have it set up and apply, it will tell us the average height. So we can then click and drag these to wherever we want on the plot and then resize them using the corner of the boxes. Similarly, for the test area, I'll say, let's bring it up into this top rectangle in the uh, upper left-hand corner and resize it accordingly. And now back in the level step control window, I'll hit apply, and that's gonna level the surface relative to the data that's within this reference area that we've defined, and then give us the average height of the data within uh, the test area. So in this case, we can see the depth of this pocket is uh, just shy of 15 microns deep. Now, maybe we want to level the surface relative to more areas, maybe some of these uh, areas down here as well. And maybe we also want to know the depth of some of these other pockets as well. We can add more reference and test shapes. Uh, if we go back to the level step control window and click on the add shapes flyout menu, we can see there's options to add more reference or test areas. And you have the option of adding either rectangular or uh, ellipse uh, shapes for either test or references. So for instance, I'm going to start out adding uh, some rectangular reference areas. So when we see this kind of dashed box, that's where we're going to be adding the new reference area. And if you left click on the mouse, it will add a shape. And you can then scroll with the uh, scroll wheel on the mouse to adjust the size of the box as well. And after we get these kind of roughly laid out and we're happy with however many we've added right click to stop adding uh, new reference or test areas and if you want to go back and resize and reposition any of these you can easily do that um, after the fact as well so now that we have our all of our reference areas defined as we like them to be we can hit apply so now when it levels the data, it's going to use the data within all of these reference areas that we've defined to level the entire surface. Uh, so if we now want to add some more test shapes to measure the depth of some of these other pockets, we'll go back to the level step control window, click on the add shapes flyout menu, and maybe for these two other rectangles, I'll click the rectangular shape, and similarly left click to add those. And then we can resize them so they fit pretty well within uh, the pockets. And then for the uh, circular pocket over here, I'm going to go back to add shapes and add an elliptical test surface. And then use the scroll wheel to adjust the size and left click to add it. So now in just a few short steps, we've gone through and leveled uh, the entire surface relative to all of these different reference areas that we've wanted and measured the depth of all four of these pockets. And if there were more pockets or other features, you could easily go through and add more test and reference areas as need be. So far, all that we've done is really been using this level step tool in its investigative mode, where we're interacting with the plot real time. But maybe this is more of a production type part where we're going to be measuring this part over and over again. So we don't want to have to reset up these masks every time. What we can do to make this into a more permanent analysis is go into the level step control window and click on convert and then select convert sequence tools and what this is going to do is it's going to open the surface processing window and it's going to add a new form remove sequence step plus a step height sequence step for each of the test areas that we defined so if i click on this form remove step we'll see all of the different reference areas that we defined and if we wanted to go through and kind of fine tune this a little bit more, we can go through even in the sequence step and adjust the reference areas or add more, change things as we need. And if we now go down to any of these step height steps, we can see the different test areas that we defined. 
in each one of these step height steps outputs a now true MX result. So this result can be used anywhere within MX, just like any other result. So whether it be adding it to a plot or a process statistics grid, you can put it there as well. So for instance, if we wanted to add the step height results to one of these plots, we can right click in the plot and go to select results. Then we'll search for step height. We can add those different step height results and click OK. So now we have all of the uh, depths for each one of those pockets. And if you wanted to rename them so you know exactly which one is which, you can right click on a result and go to the scripting menu and then rename. Maybe we want to call this one the top left rectangle. We can rename that. And you could similarly go through and rename all the other step height results. So the level step tool is a great interactive tool for leveling your surface relative to certain areas of the data, as well as measuring the depth or height of features within it as well. And then you can take it from that kind of investigative interactive mode and then convert it into a more permanent analysis for a production type application. So now I'd like to open up the uh, form for Q&A relative to the level step tool. So Steve, if we have any questions, feel free to read them out to me. Thanks, Mackenzie. It looks like we have a couple of questions here. Okay. So, is it possible to pop out the mask editor in the sequence editor? Uh, yes. So if we go back into uh, surface processing, so you can see that, for instance, uh, there's these add test shapes, but there's also a mask editor button. You can then open that and say, for instance, maybe we wanted to make this mask a little bit different. Um, we could go through, delete that, and say, okay, maybe we'll make some kind of crazy looking test shape. And then within the mask editor, you have the full power of the mask editor. Uh, so we could even add another mask and then unfill it so you can add and kind of create some, whatever shapes you really need. Okay, thanks, Mackenzie. One more question here. Can level step two be used with stitch data? Yes. Uh, so since stitch data uh, acts within MX just like any other data set, you can use it easily on stitch data as well. Um, you can use it any on any plot within MX as well. So if you're doing a film's measurement and there happened to be like a step in your film thickness data, you could also use it on that as well. Thanks, Mackenzie. I'm going to hand the presentation back to you now. Thank you. So next up, we have custom workspace. So custom workspace is where we can really create that customized interface that's either a very simplified interface for a production environment or maybe a real uh, comprehensive dashboard for some in-depth investigation that has all the information you need right at your fingertips. So for this example, maybe we have a fixture that can hold several different types of metal cylinders. We can go through and set up uh, an application that would be able to measure those all together. So first, I'm just going to clear out the level step sequence step since we don't need those anymore. We're going to take a measurement on this metal cylinder that I have on the stage. So for instance, maybe this fixture can hold, say, four different samples, and we want an operator to just have one application or one interface to be able to measure all those different parts so they don't have to jump between and load different applications all the time. We can create that customized interface that shows an operator how the part should be loaded into the fixture, uh, what part is which, and then have buttons to automatically load any settings uh, for that specific part. So let's get this set up to measure roughness. So we'll remove the shape and turn on a filter. So we're really looking at just the roughness data. Now, the way that we work with custom workspace is we want to start out in whichever tab we want the, the workspace to be within. So if an operator is generally going to be measure working out of this measure tab, let's start out in the measure tab but you could add this custom workspace to any other tab you want. 
Uh, at the top of MX, go to the View menu and then Add Custom Workspace. And when we do this, it brings up this kind of blank slate to work with, as well as the Workspace Controller. Inside the Workspace Controller, we have uh, a few, few controls at the top. So there's the Layout Mode toggle. And when this is checked, you're in kind of this building mode where you're adding and changing things about the workspace. Uh, there's also Snap to Grid, which adds these dots all over the screen. So as you're laying out plots and controls and images and whatnot, uh, you can keep things really clean and organized so it looks uh, like a polished application. So to start out, uh, maybe we want an operator to have an easy visualization as to how each part should be in the fixture. So maybe we created an image that shows the part or the parts and how they should be in the fixture. We can add an image option from the workspace controller and then click and move it to wherever we want it to be in the workspace and then resize it to however big we want it to be. We want something like that. And now to populate that uh, image box with an image, uh, we're gonna exit out of layout mode temporarily and then right click in the box and say select image. Then for instance, these are some images that I had created earlier. So we'll select one of those. So now we can see uh, a picture of what the fixture looks like in all the different parts that an operator may need to put in them, and as well as labeled to which each what each part is. Uh, so if each of these parts requires slightly different uh, measurement controls or analyze controls to measure them, maybe we've created uh, some scripts that will automatically load settings and output data as we need. When we go back to the workspace, controller and turn in layout mode back on, we can add some script buttons. And then to make it easy for an operator to know exactly which button is going to measure which part, we can place those right next to each image. And then let's label these so uh, it makes it really easy for an operator to know what they are. So first I'm gonna right click on one of the buttons and I'm going to do clear image to get rid of the MX icon and give us a little bit more real estate to work with. Uh, right click in the button again and go to set label. And maybe this one is going to be measure A. And we could similarly do that to the other buttons as well. We can also change the font to make it a bit bigger so an operator can easily see uh, what button that is. So now to point at each button to the script that it's supposed to run, we're gonna exit out of layout mode and then right click on the script button and go to script options. In there, you can go to the button that says choose script. And then for instance, this is gonna be measure A. So um, when an operator clicks on that measure A button, it's gonna go measure whatever is set up in that script. We could similarly do that for the other run script buttons as well. So now we're gonna figure out what other information we want the operator to see. Um, maybe they need a nice big live display so they can see what the camera is seeing in real time to make sure things are set up properly. And then maybe they need a plot of what the height data is going to look like. Now, since in MX, you can turn any plot into a live display, all we need to do is add the surface plot and then we can change one of them into a live display. So in the workspace controller, we'll go to plots and we'll search for surface. Then add the test surface, click OK. So now we can see our plot with the test data in it. If you right click on that plot, you can go to duplicate to create another instance of it. So we'll be able to turn one of these into a live display and one of them will remain a surface plot. You can now resize, the, resize these to however large we want them to be. And then once we're happy with how they look, we're gonna exit out of layout mode temporarily so we can turn one of these into a live display. And the way you do that is uh, right click on the bottom status bar and we'll bring up the live display toolbar. On that toolbar is a green checkbox and this is the toggle to turn it into a live display. So now we can see exactly what the camera is seeing real time. As I move the stage up and down, we'll see the fringes move. Now, since we don't need this toolbar anymore because an operator isn't going to have any need to interact with it, we can right click on it and then uncheck live display. 
So now that we've got our plots that the operator is going to need to see, the live display and the surface plot, so they can check to make sure the data looks good, we need to figure out what else they might need. Maybe they need to see a, a few results so they know, okay, is this part good or bad? Back in the workspace controller, we can go to results and maybe we want them to see SA, which is your average roughness. Maybe SQ, which is your RMS roughness. And then maybe SKU for kurtosis. You could add as many of the results as you wanted. Uh, just like we changed the font size for the script buttons, we can similarly do that for these results. So it makes it easy for an operator to uh, see the result. So once we have those set, we can then place them wherever we want within the workspace. And then once we're happy and we say, okay, you know what? This is everything an operator is gonna need to see. It's got an image with how the parts should be placed in the fixture. We've got the script buttons to run each parts individually. We've got that nice big live display and surface plot and results. We can close out of the workspace controller. And then since this is a production part or an application, you'd want to go to file, save application as, so then an operator would just load that the next time. So to show you some examples of what kind of like a polished custom workspace could look like, I created some previously. So each time you add a new workspace, it gets added to this navigator over on the left-hand side. So in this case, this is workspace one, since I hadn't renamed it. Uh, but then these previous ones, I have parts A through D, sample E. Let's look at parts A through D. So now I've got this set up with uh, a nice big image with all of our fixture and parts set up in it. We've got each of the script buttons set up and renamed accordingly, all pointed to the different scripts they're supposed to run. We've got our uh, plot data here that we've got, and then the results that the operator needs to see. And then maybe at the end of this, they need to go through and save a report as to what the data should look like. They've got a nice big save reports button. Uh, so they've got everything they need to see without having to see other stuff. Or maybe we've got sample E, which requires some different information for an operator to see. When we click on that, we can see, okay, now we've got a a much different interface where we've got a big measure button to measure that part. Similarly, an image with how it should be placed, maybe a little bit smaller live display. So then we have more room for some other plots. Like maybe there's waviness of the surface that's interested or the overall shape of the surface, as well as some black and white images of the surface too. And then we've added some more results and in some cases for the waviness ones, renamed them with a capital W. Uh, so people know that those are the waviness ones. So custom workspace is a great way to create a very customized user interface, whether it be a very simplified interface for a production environment where you really want to make it so the operator only sees what they need to see and they don't see anything else. Um, or maybe you're doing some really in-depth investigative analysis and you really want to have all of your controls and information right at your fingertips. You can really create a workspace that encompasses all of that. Uh, so now I'd like to open up to any questions we might have about custom workspace. Thanks, Mackenzie. It looks like we have one question for this section. Okay. Can you, can you set an application to be automatically opened to the custom workspace upon load? Yes. Uh, when you uh, save an application, you do have an option to set a custom workspace to the kind of like home screen. So whenever you load that op application, rather than uh, opening to the main kind of measure screen that you would normally see, it would go to that custom workspace as well. So then an operator wouldn't necessarily have to hunt around and figure out uh, where the screen is that they need to see, it would automatically load with the screen that they need to see. Thanks, Mackenzie. That looks, our, that looks like our only question for the section, so I'm gonna hand it back to you. Okay, thank you. So for a summary of what we went over today, so we started out talking about Part Finder and Smart Setup, which are the tools that really make it easy to find focus and immediately get data um, on just about any surface. It doesn't matter whether you have a smooth surface, a rough surface, a uh, polished reflective surface, or something that's really diffuse and hard to see. 
Uh, doesn't matter if it's opaque or transparent. It can be green, blue, polka dotted. The surface really doesn't make much of a difference. It's going to work regardless. Uh, then we went into the level step tool, which is the interactive investigative tool where you can use it to level um, your surface relative to various parts of the data, as well as then go through and measure the height or depth of features within the surface. Uh, to finish off, we went over to custom workspace where you can create that really customized interface, whether it be uh, ultra simplified for a production environment or really comprehensive uh, interface that has all your tools that you need right at your fingertips for some in-depth uh, investigation. So all of these tools that we saw today are available on all of our latest generation profilers. So the ZGage Pro HR, the NewView 9000, and the NextView NX2. Um, and also when running MX 7.6.0.4 and higher. Um, the custom workspace as well as the level step tool are available on any tool that are running uh, this software version or higher. Now I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that we went over and if you have any questions uh, about anything that you saw today or any other information that you might want, uh, feel free to email us at inquire at zygo.com or you can get to us through the uh, website at zygo.com forward slash contact. Uh, if there are any other questions that uh, we may not have gotten to earlier that may be of interest to a wider audience, uh, if we have any of those, we can answer a few of them now. Uh, thanks, Mackenzie. I definitely missed a few questions. Um, so anyone who had a question that was unanswered, um, we will be getting back to you via email after the presentation. Um, it looks like right now, most of the questions are specific to individual customers. So I'm going to hand it back to you. Very good. Well, uh, thank you guys for coming today. Uh, hopefully you guys are all staying safe. And once this is all over, we can see each other in person um, and get back to the normalcy. So all those questions that were submitted that we weren't able to answer right now, uh, we'll, we've got them all saved and we'll get back to you through email. So thank you guys for coming and have a great day.